Greetings everybody, I'm Daniel Muppet Boy, hosting this episode of Danny the Logo Historian. Jeez, I really shortened that intro, didn't I? Anyways, today we'll be looking at the logos of Sony Pictures Releasing International. As the name suggests, they were formed to distribute Columbia Pictures Entertainment films, now it's Sony Pictures Entertainment, in the 80s. Their previous name was Columbia TriStar Film Distributors International. Such a mouthful. Fun fact, they were already distributing films in Brazil using this logo, right here, and they were always credited as Columbia TriStar Pictures. Very interesting, huh? They also had other subsidiaries around the world, such as in Italy and Spain. But then in 2005, when Sony renamed the remainder of its Columbia TriStar divisions, like Columbia TriStar Home Entertainment, the international division followed suit. As far as I know, the 2005 logo, <laughs> 2005, has never been used in actual exports of Sony's films, only in local productions. Let's get started. Our first logo came out in the late 80s and looks like this. Seems good. Let's watch it. This logo was a suitable start for Columbia TriStar's lineage of simpler logos, since they were always followed by either Columbia's or TriStar's logos, which got you pumped up for the film. I really like the sky animation and the boxes turning as a great effect for the time. Overall, pretty good. Now, onto the variants. This logo has a few variants, beginning with one made for their Italian operations. Another variant was made for trailers for their films, along with a Spanish variant. Now, onto our next logo, which is as simple as can be. So much so that I won't even tell my opinion on it because it's literally just white words on a black background fitting in and out. Anyways, here it is. The only thing I can say about it is that it looks like a placeholder. Now let's move on to our next logo which came out after the whole painting rebrand of both Columbia and TriStar. Again, it just fades in and fades out, but compared to the previous logo, it's filled with detail. The sky background looks very pleasing to look at, and the presence of the two siblings again is great. Yes, I like to call them siblings. Uh, maybe there could be a bit of animation in the main variant, but it's still great nonetheless. It's great that I requested animation because that's exactly what the following variant has. This one, as far as I know, was only used in international prints of the 1994 Street Fighter film. Ah, much better. You may notice that the sky background is now the Columbia logo's background. I wonder if they just got the logo's model, removed everything except for the clouds, and inserted that into this variant. Anyway, there are variants for both their Italian... ...and Spanish operations. The next variants are two variations taken from a trailer for Solo, not to be confused with the 2018 Star Wars movie, everyone, and a Street Fighter featurette, respectively. Here they are. It's hora de elegir una That featurette variant was so authentic, I even believe it could have been used theatrically. I would say the normal variant is my favorite logo from the Columbia TriStar era. I wonder what they're gonna do with the text on background again. 
This time, the background does have a pleasing gradient, so at least it's something compared to the second logo. And this one has variants. How cool is that? Anyway, here are the two international variants. And here are the, this time only Spanish, variants. Pretty good in my opinion, much better than the second logo. Now, the following logo is the last one in the Columbia TriStar Film Distributors International area, and was famously spotted in its international prints of The Punisher and Suspect Zero. Honestly, I like it. If this logo has serviceable animation next to a much more beautiful and bombastic logo, I think it does its job well. Although, this does remind me of the Buena Vista International logo. <laughs> a closing variant spotted at the end of the Punisher exists. That was pretty cool to see. Now for our fifth and final logo, now in the Sony Pictures Releasing International area. Looks just like the Sony Pictures Home Entertainment logo, but let's see. Yep, I was right. But this logo does work because of its similarity. This logo looks like it was made to be seen in theaters, and it is great because of that. Everything is just so beautiful. The effects, the music, everything. This serves for both logos. Well, only one Spanish variant exists for this one, and it seems kinda cheap because it seems they freeze-framed the logo because before international can appear. Here it is. I find it pretty cool that Spain has always had some sort of variant for their logos. Anyway, that concludes this episode of Danny the Logo Historian. I don't really have any cool words to end this episode on other than I have fun doing these episodes. Well, say goodnight, Danny. Good night. Huh. <laughs> that was weird. Anyway, bye everybody. See you all next time.